Right, hello. So what are we going to be doing today? Well, you tell me. That's right. We're going to be animating our bow. Well done. So, yeah, last episode we modelled it. And now uh, we just need to animate it. Which requires bones and rigging. And in part three, we will be texturing it. And that will be the end. Oh, what a shame. So anyway, let's go into Blender and get started. Okay, so this is what we left off with from last episode. We've got a modelled bow. Well, kind of modelled. There's some changes we need to make in order for it to be animated. So let's take this into edit mode. Now, at the minute, the string is one solid piece. There's no vertices to put joints in it. So we need to add them. So you can actually pull the string and it'll bend rather than just move all together. And this is called a uh, loop cut and slide. Um, if we have a loop on the model, uh, we can just add some vertices in between. So we're going to do that. And we can slide it. And we're just going to do this again. In this basically just adds a breaking point in a mesh. So you can uh, bend it. We'll move this one down. We want them to be roughly in the same position as the notching point because that is where the, the pivot is going to be. Because the notching point is a solid piece, we don't want that to flex. And we also need to add it into the handle uh, in the middle so the bow can bend more fluently. So, in order to animate it, we need to add a bone. So we've got to add armature single bone. We'll get it to face the right way. And take it into edit mode. We'll scale it up and this bone will be the one uh, that you pull to draw the bow. And we're going to make another one which will control the position of the bow. So you just move the other one round um, and it will move the whole bow. So if this one on the left moves the whole bow and the one on the right draws it, we need the one on the right to follow the one on the left whenever we move it. Uh, this is called a parent. So we just select both, control P. We'll keep the offset because we don't want them to be next to each other. We'll them to keep the distance between each other. And just test that. Yep, it follows that one. Yet we can move the one on the right independently. Uh, this is called a parent, and that one is a child of the parent. Okay, so now we need to animate the mesh. So this requires parenting the uh, mesh to the bones. So you just do control P with automatic weights. And I'll get I'll uh, tell you what weights are in a second. But just make sure you hit that. So we need to take the bones into pose mode and the mesh into weight paint mode. And this is just seeing what it has done already. There's one slight problem. It does pull the string back. But in a bow, the wood is meant to bend as well. And that's what we can achieve with weight painting. So that's what we're going to do now. So basically, uh, weight painting is how much influence the bone has on the mesh. So if you put 100% influence, it would always move with the bone. If we put, say, 0.1, um, weight on it then it would only have a very slight influence on the mesh so what we want to do is make certain parts more influenced than others and we want to make the notching point 100% because that is what the player will pull and we want to make 
the top parts, like the bits closest to the string, have the second highest, and then it'll get slower. I mean, lower as it gets towards the middle of the bow where the wood is stronger. So I'm just going down here, decreasing the weight each time as it gets toward the thicker part of the wood because the thinner wood will bend more easily. And then once we've done this part we will do the same on the top of the bow. This part here is going to be 0 0.04 and then we want a tiny bit of influence on the handle it'll only bend an absolute tiny bit and then a minuscule bit on the middle it's still going to bend but you won't notice it and we're just copying what we did on the bottom on the top side so that's 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.8 etc till 0.2 and I should probably mention that we're doing this for all the joints in the mesh we're not just doing it in random places uh, where the, where we've added a vertice like here we're painting it there obviously red is full weight and blue is no weight. Orange is somewhere in between. Purple, that sort of stuff. And finally, no point two on the top. So we are going to test it now by drawing the bow. So we just get our armature and pull it back. And we are going to look for any errors. Uh, there's one at the top if you can see. It's jutting out slightly there. So we're just going to go in and correct that. I must have uh, skipped it with my brush. No worries. I think this part here was meant to be 0 0.16 there we go the bow should be perfect now let's try pulling it yeah that's really nice actually the wood bends only slightly and the notching point is pulled back the furthest Obviously you can pull it the other way but we won't do that. And just a test, we'll move this one around. That's working. It's taking the whole ball with it. So now we've rigged it. That was what we just did. We've rigged it with uh, an armature. We will now animate it. And this requires something called keyframes. Now keyframes are certain points in the animation where the rotation and the scale and the um, location of things change everything in between is something called interpolated which means it uh, works out what is in between each of the keyframes so that's all you need, you don't need to do each individual frame thanks to Blender you can just do key points in the animation and it will join it up nicely So. On frame 1 it will be in the middle. Now on frame 30 um, the ball will be fully drawn which means up until 30 uh, you'll see the ball getting pulled. And now it's going to lash forward really quickly. So this will only be like 2 or 3 frames. Pull it right forward. It's going to let go of so much power that the wood will bend the other way for a split second so 
I to insert keyframe it's just location because we're not rotating the bones are we we're not scaling them we're not making them bigger we're literally just moving them on the x-axis so all we need to do is for the location and you get a bit of reverberation with the string and finally it will finish in it in the original position at frame 37 and that is how long the animation is so we need to set the end to 37 frames not 250 perfect okay let's play the animation it will be a bit slow because of my screen recorder in the background but the ball is getting drawn it's released boing that's just killed someone let's do it again the cool thing about blender is you can move around the camera and the object in the animation will still play so we can still move the bow around we should be using the bone sorry not the bow model now we'll select that bone and this is just to show we can move the model around and the animation will still play so what have we done in this episode well we've done some quick corrections to the bow model and uh, we've animated it and in part three which is the last episode we'll be unwrapping and texturing and we'll wrap up the series with a nice little video of the final textured animated bow so make sure you like and subscribe bye